All right, so as, as a recap, what you're looking at is mid lane, mostly control mages, but you've been playing some assassins recently. You started on Riven, and we're trying to make sure that everything that you have is fundamentally sound, so you can when you do pick up new champions and you're looking at what to apply to your games and trying to climb, we want to make sure that those things are steady so that no matter which champion you pick up, the rules are going to fundamentally apply the same, right? Right. So we're going to go over our priority, uh, what it means to be strong side, the timers, like your level up timers, and knowing like what timers junglers are on, and the use of Fog of War. Okay. So what we'll do today is I'm going to look over your game right here, what's going on now in this one. Then we'll go over like a, a quick little drill. We'll play, do a little 1v1 so we can practice those ideas. And then you'll go into game and I'll go through at least the laning phase with you and and try to apply these things live. Gotcha. All right. So uh, this was the game before you and I met. Uh, I decided uh, for this one. Um, sorry, you're not streaming. You're right, I accidentally canceled my own rather than canceling yours. All right. Jesus. Stop watching, there we go. All right, now we're off the right one. Okay, so you can see the screen now? You can see my mouse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. So what I asked last time, what was what is your plan to start this game? Um try to stay healthy and get the at least two of the first three creeps with my Q. Okay. Uh getting getting minions on the first wave, you remember we talked about what the repercussions of that can be? Um losing Prio. Yeah, well we can or set up getting... where yeah, the wave might start pushing out on us. If they don't actually attack us, then they might be a little bit more in control of the wave. Generally, on the assassins, we're looking for the second wave to crash into us and then for us to rebound. Do you right. know which minion gives you your level three timer? Like which minion needs to die for you to get to level three? Uh, It's the third melee before the first cannon, right? Uh, it's the second melee in the cannon wave. Right. So level two will happen on your first melee of the next wave, and that's as long as at least two uh, ranged ones have died. Okay, so that's right. the first one that people are going to look for. They don't necessarily need to kill all three, but they need to make sure two die in the melee of the next wave. The next big level up timer is either the cannon dying or the or two melees dying in the cannon wave. Now, a little bit of league history. Uh, dematerializer used to be on a shorter cooldown and that was because if you used it at the cannon wave you could skip to level three essentially and they decided we don't want that it's pretty broken it created a metagame where basically everyone in pro needed demat to to get that so they pushed it back to three minutes and that's why dematerializer comes off cooldown at three minutes now so when you're looking at which spikes to go at. What's your first window to try to beat this way? Um, level two, if I get it first, and I have the right runes. Okay, and then you, you sound unsure about that. Yeah, uh, I'm not really sure about trading against Sway, because especially if he lands the spells, it's just like always a losing trade. Okay, yeah, and specifically you're looking for his Q to be off cooldown because he's got that sh um, line line target uh, fear, and if and if you're jumping to a fairly predictable spot and he hits you with that, it means that he gets to hit you for free with with the rest of the damage, right? So if he hits you with yeah, EQ... Yeah, it's pretty annoying because you can also just, like, EE when you shrimp out of the back line, like the, the caster minions. Mm -hmm. So yeah. right here, this is going against our first... Uh, our first goal which is we're trying to get kills on this guy he's a, a mage any control mage is going to be assassin favored at level three and four for all in trades the idea yeah. is that you want to make sure that your hp is high right because the gold that you get for this kill vastly outweighs the ones that you're getting for the minions and if right. it's costing you 
50 to 100 health for every minion you get then it's just not worth it right so yeah that's one big thing that we want to avoid right now now we're already sitting super low that even if we go flat health runes which i know you did yeah this is still going to be a, a problematic situation you're just sitting on 523 you don't have enough to one shot him but if you get like 400 of his health he can still just continue the trade on you and you're pretty too sure low. I took Doran. oh no i took shield this game this we have uh Doran shield yeah so you're, you're getting some of it back but it's still yeah. it's still not even close in comparison right you just you'd rather give up 63 gold to have to be full health and and you remember we talked about um last time just briefly that if you just target him with a q you can pull the wave towards you in in moments like that obviously in a range matchup you're not looking to do that you're not trying to create the push but just if you ever need to manipulate the matchup that's how you can do it and you just don't want to cast any q that's going to push the wave by accident right right i do that like a lot i just cast random cues i've been doing it a lot less though since we spoke that's good yeah yeah you want to you want to have a goal for every single cooldown so you can notice he's three that shuts off our window here what normally could have been a window with us pushing out um especially when we go back to this spot rather than trying to use our hp to get these cs just let it sit here and then when it sits here your wave will actually stack up the best situation possible is to actually let this wave crash do not fast push and this cannon will reinforce all right at about 10 seconds past the wave timer so at a 240 it'll make it from here to here and then that cannon will get gummed up under the turret and then you can hit level three from the safety of the back of your turret Right, and right. once that happens, then it's very easy to jump on this guy. And also, because your your turret is killing his uh, minions, you're going to hit that. He's not going to be able to kill your minions fast enough if you watch this right here. Like, if we don't fight for these, right, if we're not killing these quickly, watch what would yeah. happen here. This would just gum up, and he's going to have to throw spells if he wants any chance of clearing these minions. Now, a good mage player will do that he'll make sure that he's every single auto attack is here or if your name's chovy then he'll back out and he'll make sure to put a ward somewhere over here it looks like they've already accomplished that as a team so he doesn't need it he has eyes on viego that's exactly what he wants and if you're the control mage you're going to want to do that um but you'll notice that because you're kind of pushing this and you and you get spells on the wave i, I believe you do right you must uh, there's, cast no way, you, uh, yeah, there's no way that this whole wave dies without without spells Okay, no, we didn't actually get the AoE on the back line. But just the little bit of the extra jam damage and chip damage means that this is coming out to him. And the wave sits out here. He's going to hit level 3 comfortably, and you're low level. So we can do better there, all right? That's the first thing that, that I want to look at. So we're going to do a little 1v1 where we, where we apply that, okay? Sure. The next thing that I want to look at is strong side and fog. Okay, so we're looking at how we use the knowledge of what's going on in the game right now. So let's switch this over to red side camera. Where do you know that you're strong right now? On the top side of the map? Top side, right? Viego's a little bit closer. This is where you'd like to take trades because in every moment where a fight breaks out, you have a better chance of getting support than he does. Viego's already done clearing on this side though, so he's on his way bot. So that means from now on, you basically want to hedge to this side. All right. right. Not only that, but if you get a chance to escape at any moment, you're looking to get a ward somewhere like right here or it, it, potentially as far as the the raptors. But this isn't necessary. This is if you're still helping your team to find the enemy jungler. But if you know where they are and you're just saying, hey, I want to cover myself from 230 to four. I want to have a ward here that will see any path that a Mumu might take to come gank me. Right. Right. That's because this is going to become the strong side of your map, wherever the jungler is. Is where you consider strong side and so from this moment that viego shifts i want you to start positioning yourself angularly diagonal from wherever they are so if they want to come harass you they have to come closer to your jungler right yeah so just like lean on the side that your jungler is playing on exactly leaning is the perfect term for it all right so you're you're always going to lean right or left based on which side your jungler is on once you get to a higher level and i'm talking much higher uh then you can start getting getting into head games with where the jungler might actually be but that's that's right, right we're talking 500 yeah, lp fake pressure doesn't really 
right and run. and people that you play against aren't going to respect this as much as they should in emerald and diamond even even in masters uh 500 lp i've st- i still see people that are leaning to the wrong side or they think that they're playing a, a mind game but they're doing it at way too much risk they're not applying it correctly right so this this cue as another example you're only now just hitting three now we don't have our cooldown for our first window that we're trying to trade on right and most times as assassins what we're trying to do is get short trades where we're looking to bounce in deal damage get out so if it's fizz right q auto w for a reset e your way out or e to just drop minion aggro and then pop back out katarina very similar q something like this minion so that it'll land right here q uh, jump on top of them go for an auto jump back out on the reset um and then try to get a one to zero trade all right one one to zero trades means you deal damage to them without them dealing damage back to you right all right yeah. with with way that has a little bit of uh point and click and has wide area of effect it can be a little bit harder but someone like vagar uh you can actually get in and out without ever taking damage right and that's what makes the vagar matchup so easy for katarina that you can jump over his wall and then there's nothing he can really do everything's on a timer or a line skill shot that is very easy for you to run around right okay now we've used all of our cooldowns to try to get cs and that means that we don't have anything left to trade with and now the lane's completely his right and so we've lost all the threat that we that we might have gotten now how knowing knowing what we know how do you try to salvage the situation? What's how do we get out of this? What's called a pin? Uh, let the wave crash, and then just try to last hit the creeps in my queue, like behind my tower. Yeah, in front of it. And and even the last hits are less important than you getting back to base and and resetting all your your HP. You need to be able to come back into a into a world where you might threaten them. In in this spot, because we've been zoned out so much, we're actually struggling. Uh, to get any of that basically he hasn't had to respect our kill threat and because of that we haven't been able to comfortably see us and every time that we uncomfortably see us into his auto attacks and his spells it means that he's dominating the tempo of the lane right yeah i almost like never get good lane uh situations in the early game i like almost always have to reset well like super unhealthy and then get a dark seal and go back yeah and and knowing what you know now skipping a couple cs and creating kill pressure will force them into trickier situations right now you're in the tricky situation where you have to decide can i risk my hp to get these casters right and i'm using do i use my spells and now i'm completely not a threat to this guy and realistically you just have to let these go you're better off just standing back here pressing your recall button and especially after he uses his q so he doesn't have his longest range spell even if he sees you you're making him take the decision of stepping under turret to maybe hit you with a spell, take a little bit of damage. You can dodge it with your movement. And then at least he takes a turret shot, right? And you're trying to get this resource of his to go down. He has way too much of of the mana to, to care, right? This is not a champion that you can mana starve. Uh, and most mages are going to be like that. You can't really mana starve them, especially if they're using auto attacks most of the time the way Jovi does for example lots of autos um and that's mm-hmm. one of one of the reasons why pro players almost always will go attack speed runes yeah one is to be able to get two auto attacks on a caster under a turret uh, another one is to be able to cancel their own animation faster so that, so that they don't get locked into patterns but more than anything it's that's the fastest way to push and they can get more attacks off more damage off on the wave without using spells because your spells, your mage spike comes in the mid game, right? Or you're gonna get level six and your base level spells will be very effective. Early game, you can use them for poke, uh, but mostly they're gonna be using their attacks because they're, until they get lost chapter, it's gonna cost too much mana to spam. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay. How much knowledge, and you can see what, you know, the, the, the pain that we take right here, and obviously this turns into a kill. Uh, and I don't mind if you're going to be limit testing, but this is just, this isn't really limit testing. This is more just weak fundamentals that can improve, right? Right. Unfortunately, the timing that goes along with this is Viego finishing with his jungle, 
most junglers are going to be done by 3.30. Uh, most people who don't clear by 3.30 it means that they aren't practiced, but as you get into Diamond, you should get everyone out of the jungle by 3.30. They're looking to cross this path at like 3.25. It depends on champions. Um, I won't get into every single jungler and how fast they clear, but having an idea of who the fast clearers are, like Karthus, Zyra, Brand, they're going to be done at 3.10, all right? And they can be in your lane at level four, already pushing for you. This timer is one that we'd like to take advantage of. And sometimes when we do a short trade at level three, then we can convince a jungler to come by because this person's sitting at 60% health. Right. Okay. Now we're kind of stuck in just having to get back to lane. You generally want to be using any movement spell that you have. So even if it's E to await, which you may have used. Let me... For clarity, are we using W? Yeah, like you should be using W to get out of lane. This is true yeah. for every champion. Just that little bit of extra move speed is the difference sometimes between getting a minion and not getting it. Okay. Right now, most likely, Proudmore on, uh, or this guy, Wei, has probably recalled. He's gotten a kill off on you. He got a very clear kill. It's a cannon wave. This is a perfect time for him to recall. Mm -hmm. Do you know why cannon waves are priority for for recalls because they're you can't shove them out as fast so you can right. go back and collect it yeah precisely right so that's that's one thing he's going to be able to get back to this lane most likely only losing these these three casters or th three melees excuse me you want to let that happen right there's there's not right. very much of a world where you can stop where, where you, you still can hard push this way right if, if you hard push then he's still going to collect so this is an example right now you are hard pushing and we'll see how much it taxes him all right, it is going to go under turret. It is Katarina who can do it a little bit faster. We still don't deny this. He loses two melees. It's not a big deal. You can make them lose more by sitting the wave here for, for a bit, having it just fight. You can aim your spells at the casters and get ready for a big burst and just save it for the end rather than the beginning. Uh, and that will get a little bit more health. I absolutely love what you're doing here on the roam. All right, you've cleared it in. This is good use. Crashing in, you created a... a Roam timer for yourself, and you're going forward. Now, what's your plan here? Um, I don't remember. Probably just go and get kills. I like what I, I used to not do. Like, very, I used to do this very poorly. I would just, like, go in without baiting out the enemy spells. But now I usually wait until the, like, main CC cooldown is down to go in. Okay. Because I was just, like, going and dying on repeat. Yeah, and that's going to be true about every assassin. Your your stat profile is not going to be fantastic for just walking up at them, right? right. And mages in general, although your control mages are going to have some long range AOE, hopefully with a slow or something that you can like set yourself up for. Uh, you'd like to encourage your team to start looking for the trade to do that. All right, so right. I just messaged you ACE. ACE is an acronym that stands for Assess, Communicate, and Effectuate. All right, so what do you think that means? Um, so you assess the situation. Uh, you communicate to your team the plan, and then you set the plan in motion? Yeah, precisely. Right, you're, you're trying to communicate as best as you can that you're on your way here. So this with the ping and the all-in, Perfect, all right. We'll even back it up a step. I don't know who's pinging here, singles to, that looks like Viego's pinging to retreat. So Viego is probably saying, hey, look, I took a recall and I don't know where Amumu is. There's a chance that Amumu has just like finished his clear and he's working his way down here, or that he went like full clear this way and he might be coming back from his, you know, starting his second clear. And Amumu who went straight to this after his clear and ran straight bottom would be in this bush right now. So Viego's doing a little bit of that as well, which unfortunately plays against what you're doing, but I still don't mind the plan to get down here because this is a pushing wave. You've got level three bot laners. This is your juiciest target. Right here, you need to you need to ping a little bit about what, what you're doing, All right, Viego sees that you're coming, so he's saying, okay, I'm in with you. You should probably be pinging something like right here uh, to let your team know because the last thing that happened 
was they got pinged back by the Viego. Right, so they're not really in a position. You can see by where they are. They're not looking to trade right now. You want them to start trading specifically because you want this W down and you want this W down. Yeah. Uh, not a huge deal that Jin has his because it's easy enough to dodge, but Pantheon's point and click, and that can turn into a full combo from the two of them. You can just die before anything else happens, right? Mm -hmm. So assess, say, okay, I've created a push. I'm on my way. Communicate, say, I'm going here. You might even ping like a defend turret, which might um, encourage the gangplank to come over and pick up a wave, right? He could go and just fast shove a wave, uh, especially if in a situation like this, if he were afraid of a Mumu being nearby, which you can actually see from this Squire's Bloom, gangplank might be saying, you know what? This is frozen. I can't touch this. I can't go up to this wave because a Mumu might come and I don't want to die. So he might decide, okay, I'll come over here because Katarina has said I'm leaving mid and I'm going to come for a play. He can go pick up a wave here, just as good as a wave up top. Make sense? Gotcha. Yep. So we're coming in. Diego's communicating that he's going to go. You've made it in un unseen. All right, they haven't they haven't seen you on anything. This is, well, we don't know if we didn't have wards here. Looks like the yeah pink ward got it. I like that you skipped it. You can see Jin's already moving away. What's your target, Jin or Pantheon here? Now that the uh, now that they've moved, it should be Jin. But I think I go on Pantheon here. Yeah, realistically, it's, it's going to be wherever the three v one is, right? You're much better off oh. taking different fights now with Viego here, and the fact that Viego pinged, it might be totally fine to just isolate Jin and go for the Jin kill, mm -hmm. right? And say like, but you have to communicate this to your team because you can see they're trained here. They're looking at Pantheon. And that means that there's nothing left. Also, it gives them a way out, which is not ideal. Yeah. So now our team actually gets nothing out of this when it, it could have been a situation where we get more. Jin ends up getting pinned here. He didn't realize that he could have just walked out this way. Uh, but we we could have guaranteed the Jin kill instead of maybe getting the Jin kill. And we certainly could have done better on, on the Pantheon situation. Agreed? Yeah. yeah, 100%. All right, so right there, we're already we're just in the first five minutes, and and there's a lot that we that we can do. So let's jump into a game together. I'm gonna play a control mage. You're gonna play an assassin. You've been playing mostly Katarina. Yeah, I've been just like one tricking cat for the past week. Okay, and what we're going to do is challenge this. Um, try to create this challenge in your mind of taking as little damage as possible so that you have the best possible window to to strike when you have spells up and assassin spells are always going to have the highest base value okay and that's why you can go in for for those short trades are you on um are you on this account or are you on another one I'm logging on to that one now. Yep. Is there a mage in particular you want me to play? Um, no, not really. Okay. My worst matchups, this patch are probably Huey and probably Yasuo. That's on a mage, though. So yeah, Way and uh, honestly, those are two much more difficult champions than <laughs> than I'm. I want to play at any level that is going to train you okay. at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to more control mage. I'll go. I'll play. Or he's not really there. You should be crushing way. I'm gonna play away because I, I want you to be able to to beat it. And okay. the ideas are gonna be the same whether or not I'm playing A Soul, Vagar, Twisted Fate, any of these champions that that don't have a point and click CC. Um, or or if they do, it comes at a cost or a high cooldown, something that you can out trade. Uh, all of those matchups are ones that you should be able to get in, get a short sequence off on, and then get out. And the, the path is going to be the same.
Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to ask you in game where the junglers are. I'm can, I'm going to suppose that we've seen them at some point, and ask you, you know, qu dynamic questions like when's your next level up, when when's your next opportunity to trade back, uh, where where is the threat, what side should you be leaning on, things like this. Okay. I'm just going to go standard way rune side. Nothing is different. So there's three builds I go. I go conquer with domination, just like standard, but Nash is tooth first. I go electrocute with precision with uh, Lich Bane first and then into Shadow Flame. And then I go conquer with resolve and then a tankier build into like really crappy matchups. And I don't really know like specific matchup wise which ones to go i just know like if they're super squishy and i need to completely one burst them before they can react then i go lich main build if i need like just a mix of both then i go the conquer domination build and if i need tankiness and like survivability and team fights then i go the resolve build i'm gonna show you some are you familiar familiar with this site Long yeah I, I, I just saw it like the other week okay um, it. this item is insane for katarina yeah um, and really, you can't go wrong with any of the builds that finish with this because it's going to give you that shred. It's giving you on hit damage for your uh, your passive, and then you can you can actually pair this with anything. And it tends to do best with Blade of the Rune King, but like this build on three four items is insane. Yeah, I only ever go that that build scales super well. All like, it's all on hit one. Mm -hmm. I want a super fun, I just don't like having only Bork in lane because it depends a lot on auto attacks and so many mages are just so slippery. Yeah, well you can get your E off on them and that should be a free a free slow, which allows you to get your W off. And then so if you're going QE and then just to picking up the dagger, getting the slow off, and then you should be able to hit your W off of that and that gives you a second E, it allows you to short trade and come back out. Right. They're just cool. like when you don't when you don't have the component like when you only have the components for Bork, like I don't I'm not very good with the builds until then. Got you. It's probably best. I mean one of the good things about Katarina is that she's so flexible in that way. And mm -hmm. it allows you to to be able to choose the different builds as they as they lend themselves to it. Um I'm not going to recommend one over the other i would say continue to watch the streamers and see what under what situations they pick those right and the thing is the fundamentals are going to apply to every champion and all your matchups whereas right. a build might be a very specific matchup yeah right so that's why i want to i want to stay away my, from that my fundamentals and mid-game decision making are definitely my weak points All right, so first objective, I want you to hit two and three, taking no damage. All right, okay. and you're going to do that by allowing the wave to come to you. I'm going to try to disrupt this. We'll say that you your team has a ward on raptors and you don't see the jungler right now. Good. All right, good start. Not even trying to do anything, not even worth queuing me, because if you queue me, we're talking about the wave potentially pushing. All right, careful with that. Right, because now we're losing on our objective. Your wave is pushing, it's back to me. All right, you see how that's a problem? Right. Now I get to complete, I can even completely zone you off of everything uh, under the right situations, or if I have any kind of jungler presence, then we. I'd probably think a few autos there. Okay, I, I don't want you to. Because yeah. it's going to be more important that you're full health for this trading pattern than anything else. That was the wrong one. Now, one of the things that you're looking for in these assassin mage matchups is for the crowd control ability to be on cooldown. Right now, I would I don't even care. Don't yeah, don't cast that. It's, uh, sorry, this one's okay. This one's fine because of how, how stacked the wave is. But right now, all we're really doing is soaking up experience. I want you to stay healthy. And the fact that you cast that first Q at me means that I got out of this wave or I was able to hold this wave longer without having to take any of the trade backs. 
Now I could cheaty recall or I could poke you under or under turret. Okay, you're three. There you go, you can continue as long as we keep moving away. Good, you short trade and we come back. Good, all right. I accidentally leveled my E twice. Okay, so it could have been even worse for me. Now you have to be careful against again about these windows. Wait for your cooldowns. And again, don't use them on minions. You want to use cooldowns on me because every single one of them matters. And you want to make sure that you're threatening me as much as possible. Look at your HP versus mine. Okay, simple enough. You can thre threaten that because you're healthier and you get to get your back off. Now I'm making right. mistakes. I'm making plenty of mistakes. Your opponents are gonna make mistakes. Let's do this again, okay? This time we're gonna avoid that first queue because we're prioritizing the wave coming to us. You can head fake that you're going for melees with two potential benefits. One is that an inexperienced laner will back off thinking that they're afraid of you. They might even see way into Katarina as a bad matchup. Therefore, I have to retreat. So that could happen. Or you can get them to misevaluate how much they should be trying to hit you back. Be like, oh, he's challenging for CS. Let me hit right now, which will make his wave start pushing immediately, which gives you the faster crash and and rebound. Okay? okay. So when I'm playing Katarina, I should really focus on, or not dial in on trying to get the gold, but the experience instead? The experience is way more important than the gold in the first few levels. Gold scales really well, right? At the end of the game, gold is what gets you to amplify your Rabidons plus your Lich Bane plus the fact that you're shredding. It, all, all of that gold synergizes and it works together, right? Right. But until, also, I, uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, the But until you get lots of gold, you're talking about small things, right? And, uh, and the first amplifying tome, for example, doesn't really do that much. Mm -hmm. It, um, sorry, let me... I did not mean to add a bot. Um, at the beginning, your HP and your your levels is going to give you significantly more than any shop will do. And if you're trading 200 to 300 HP to get 63 gold, then suddenly you're reducing your own kill threat. You're making it much more likely that you die and that will create a bad lane state. If you're off the map, it means you don't get experience and that's how snowballs happen, right? Yeah. Put like that, it's, it's very clear. And and you said you watch mid beast a lot, right? Uh, yeah, I watch I watch a lot of league. Okay, yeah, I mean that's great. If you if you keep on looking with a with a critical eye, you'll you'll see more and more of these windows pop up. Now another small thing that we didn't talk about, but did you did you click on me to see what my stats were? Uh, no, I don't usually that do that. I, the only times I do that are to like look at specific hp values okay uh looking at specific hp is good if you click on me and you can get any amount of information about whether or not i'm running bone plating or flat health or attack speed that can be the difference between knowing whether or not you can all in wait can so, you see ruins when you left click somewhere? no you cannot but you can infer some of them right so like for example when you're pressing tab on me and you see airy and inspiration Right. You can probably guess that I'm doing something like Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and then Scorch or Gathering Storm. Right. The first time I hit you with a spell, you should check whether or not I have Scorch, right? Yeah. Because score, if I'm Scorching you early, then that means you have to put way more emphasis on not taking spell damage. Yeah. That That's you're something talking I usually do is check for Bone Plating or Second Wind. Okay but usually not like usually just those ones because they affect all ends more mm -hmm. uh and flat but, health yeah. like right now you should see if you if like right now i don't even necessarily want you to show in mid lane ever because mm -hmm. you're better off pretending i like usually you're off. Be like watching 
the invade or something yeah watching for invades like you know standing even if you can just get straight to one of these bushes for example and you just have the inside track over here and you're just like let me chill for a bit let me see if there's a late invade let me see if they balk in any way i'll be the first to know know about it then you can get that extra information all right I want you to pretend like you're challenging for these first three and judge my reaction and take the appropriate course of action. Don't take any hits that you don't need to, though. All right, come up like you're going to hit. See what I do. All right, if I immediately start poking you, then you know that I'm a person who is willing to do that. All right. Anytime that you can get a Q poke to me, that's going to be fine, right? And this, this is getting a little bit too specific for Katarina, but any any spell that you can go without drawing minion aggro, you're going to see, like, how aggressive am I looking? I'm looking pretty aggressive, yes? Yeah. So You're moving past your melee list. Yeah, so you can already start thinking, all right, I'm going to wait for, for jungle help, and I'm going to have a higher chance of success with jungle help because this person positioned so far up. Right. Let this wave crash. Do not take any damage here. It's not worth taking anything because it's going to cost too much if you try to hit me back. I shouldn't even try to kill that. I would. You can go for those t double cues if it's going to be completely safe. Okay. Right. But you don't want to stall this bounce at all. Right. I've done this to the point where I'm stacking on my side. If you had baited me a little bit earlier for an auto attack, then this would have crashed just a little bit earlier. Now I have a moment where I'm three. Now you have a trade window. That Q should have been on my face. Right. Right. I, I had just used a spell, so you need to punish that. Every time that I put a spell down is a window where you might be able to trade on me. So now that you're three, your spells have more impact than mine, and you can look for better, better short trades, one to zero trades. Have you noticed uh, that you're four? Mm -hmm. You should be punishing me for that. I was I was standing even close to a minion. That's a spike for you. Good. Keep looking for short trades. Now it's my prerogative to to let this come back to my turret. Generally, I don't want to let this happen in general. Best case scenario for you is I get a little bit flustered and I start missing CS and now I've lost all of my advantage in the lane. Now you're higher level and now you can start challenging me for things because now that you're high enough level and or high enough X HP, you can challenge more for every single resource that we have. Right. And every spell that I put on cooldown is a window that you should be looking at. All right, so we've established our first goal and you're doing pretty well with it. You've got an HP lead. You should be looking to exacerbate this as much as possible. And then when you can, either I have to choose between trading back with you or trying to push for minions. And if I ever make the wrong choice, you can either all in or look to push my wave and roam. Right. This window that we have might have been a recall uh, against some champions that can't push or if they have any challenge. Right now I'm using an elixir, so I'm gonna be pushing very easily. I like that you're trading here. Good continuation. You should be looking to all in here. Oh, you, you want to teleport. Do you always go teleport? Um, Lately I have been, because it just scales so much better and I can actually side lane. I okay. feel like when I'm side laning in the CLO, I always just like end up regretting it because my team just all dies. That's the last thing that I wanted to go over as a fundamental for Fog of War. The, the challenge of what is actually going to threaten me, or what, what is actually going to threaten you, and then the use of Fog of War in the mid game. You drew first back off of me, all right? Already an improvement. I'm making a lot of mistakes that, that players in Platinum would easily make, okay? And you want to be on the alert to push all of these. Uh, this recall that you took, can be slightly better you don't want to be push you don't want to be recalling as your cannon is pushing into my wave because yeah i should have done it earlier 
it's or killing a, it out. Yeah, it's killing a lot of your. Um... That's not a reset I think I would take normally. I was just trying to set up a good wave state for myself and failed. That's okay. like, I'm not very good at it. Okay. It's, Especially it's something reset that... timings on waves, I lose a lot of minions to that, I find. If you, if you what? Um, just like when I reset, I just tend to lose minions. Mm hmm Like, I don't, I don't know good, uh, timings. I, I, like, I try to reset on cannon waves, but, you know, sometimes it's not possible, or something else happens, or mm -hmm. I do reset on the cannon wave and it still gets pushed in. I'm, yeah. I'm still trying to learn a lot of things. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's And right now, this is not about judgment. This is about, you know, what what skills are, are missing and what are we trying to develop. All right, something we haven't really gone into is where the jungler is and, and whether or not we're leaning to one side or another. Right. Uh, we're going to add that in as we get into the next game. You got a little bit better out of, out of the leaning phase here. Did you ever think about whether or not you could or should go for a trade? Uh, Yeah, it's just when cooldowns are down like this. Yep, good time right now, it's totally fine. You continue, continue, yep, there you go. I don't have cooldowns, and you're gonna have your cooldowns back up for first. That's always gonna be a window that you can try to use, is the moment where I have just used all my spells, and it's really tempting to not, right? Because you're looking at all the damage, and you're saying, oh shoot, I'm getting chunked, I'm getting chunked. But realistically, that's all I've got. All right, let's jump out. All right, I want to go over... All right, so that, that was better. There's more yeah, windows. Usually, usually I also don't trade in waves because I just have, like, PTSD from getting <laughs> chopped up by minions. As long as you're being calculating about where it's happening and whether or not your spells are more valuable than the, than the minion hits, then you're mm -hmm. going to find those windows that work, right? Yeah. All right, quick quiz. What time does the first cannon show up? Three and a half minutes? Nope. Four minutes. The, uh, so there is one at four minutes, but it's every minute and a half for the first 15 minutes of the game. So the first wave is one and a half, the, or 130. Second wave comes at two. First cannon is at 230. Wait, like on the timer? Yep. Oh, really? Mm hmm. So you're looking at 234. 537, oh. 830, 10, okay? Um, once you get into the middle of the game, 15 minutes to 25, it starts becoming every other wave. So there's a 1430, and then there's a 1530, 1630, 1730, right? And then after 25 minutes is every wave. So I'm going back in. You can jump back on the screen to watch this game. Uh, it's still streaming, right? Should be able to get in. I want to get into the mid game and talk about like where, where and why to be. We, we I know you mentioned last time that you are familiar that mid laner is supposed to go into side waves. You generally give the mid lane to the carry. Not all carries will come. You always want to give them the op the option. Uh, what is the ace strategy for 15 minutes into the game? Um. Do you just mean to move into the sideline? Well, we have to assess, communicate, and effectuate. Okay. So how? What is? we already know that the assess means I'm going to move, or I'd like to move. The correct play is for me to move. Mm -hmm. And then I have to communicate it. So how, how might you communicate? Couple, there's a couple options. Uh, ping for help on bot, and then ping on the way. OK. And that, honestly, a lot of these, a, a lot of these spikes where you're looking to give the wave, um, the best way to do that is to make a play in their lane first, and then it becomes very apparent that to them that they can move, like especially if they get a kill. Mm -hmm. Let's take this game now. This is a game that we played together, and Jin's already in the in the mid lane. You're already moving, so we're doing well. This came mostly preempted um, by the play's rotation. I think I called for Jin to get mid like around 14. I said, Jin, you can mid now. It can be very simple like that. It's mm -hmm. generally the best way to communicate in solo queue is to give people the option and saying you can, right? right. Not Usually I actually don't type. I play with chat off. Okay. 
All right, that's totally fine. So if you're doing it with just pings, I would uh, just ping assist me in mid. E e some people even get kind of moody if you ping on them, but assist yeah. me mid and then I'm on my way bot, right? Something yeah. as simple as that is good enough. This was a game that they started off pretty far ahead, if you remember. Um, yeah. This was about the time that that uh, I th <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, I think this was FF in three minutes, guys, or something, you know, something like that, or or like I, I don't know what I, it was. Yeah, I think I think in lane I said, uh, just FF this one. I just try to, I just want to learn. There's nothing to learn here. Something along those lines. Yeah. Do you remember what I said? Learn how to win from behind. <laughs> learn, yeah. learn how to come back. Yeah, <laughs> but but um, no, there, there's always something you can get, and especially when you're limit testing, sometimes it's a good spot to say, "All right, let me see what my champion is capable of from behind." Yeah. And you know, especially things like I still have a level advantage against Kaisa, right? This is still a target that you can hunt for. You can still try to find your your way into into decent positions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna up the pace right here. This right here happens because of Aurelia's level 11 spike, okay? This is something that we can learn. Even in spots like this, we have to know that this champion is super deadly and yeah. that they're going to go in on any assassin in the game. Aurelia is very specifically insanely good against assassins because when you try to do your big combo and you try to proc elec electrocute, she just presses her W and she mitigates a significant chunk of the damage. I knew if I got hit by W or by E here, I died. But then I got hit by E. Were you making an effort to try to dodge it? Yeah. Okay. She like put it in a like a horizontal way. I thought she was gonna like put the E down and then Q through the wave and then place the other E. Okay. So she a little surprised it. you by by going laterally. Yeah. All right, you're about to respawn. Things have not been going good, but you do have ways back into this game. Looking right. at what you see right here. Garen also is trying to run it down, by the way. He's, he's been picking yeah, it to the I, fountain I for a while. Yeah. But with the information that's available, where where are you going to go? Bot lane. Bot lane. Yep. And most times, when you're going to a side lane, the best path is actually to go through here. Okay? okay. You're generally only going to lose three seconds by making this little triangle of a run, but that way you're also nearby if a fight does break out. So okay. unless you are very specifically trying to catch a cannon wave... And, and you assess that I've got exactly 25 seconds to get there and that's how long it takes for the cannon and that's my reason, then you go straight bot. And in this case, Yone's trying to crash the wave. I'm totally okay with you going straight bottom because you'll catch the maximum amount of minions. Since you're behind, that has more value than normal. Okay. You generally want to ping on my way. Like I've got this covered, we're good. Uh, you might also say you might be on your path here. You don't need necessarily need to be looking at this. You need to be telling your team like, hey, I'm not mid. Or Garen, like Aurelia's timer is back, right? Like maybe a back ping here. Something to warn your team, especially once Yone disappears. Now it becomes really important. All right, they're clearly strong on this side. Pantheon's moving this way. Kane was last seen right here. Yone's seen last here. So this entire area belongs to them. We don't want to make any move in this direction. Right. Okay. Fast push or slow push, and why? Um, I should slow push it so that I can keep safe and also build up a wave. Okay. That I need to pay attention to. Yep, that's a great answer. Right, you're going to be safer on this area. Uh, which ward do you need to get down to make sure that you're you're safe? Because, well, actually, let's assess who is a threat to you right now. Yone, Kane, and Panth. Yep. So all three of them are in range. Kane was seen 10 seconds ago, so he might be over this wall right now. Yeah. Probably not, but could be. And we know that Yone is right around here. He just pushed this wave. So three different people could be hitting us. No real reason to even approach this wave. So if we were, we were going to redo this, I know that we're in a rush to try to get to this wave. But since Yone goes completely fast pushing, uh, you want to disguise the fact that you're here to collect the wave. So... Knowing that, what's your best play? Uh, to wait in that bush for yep. the minions to come. Precisely, right? And specifically, a uh, small thing that is, it's worth mentioning now, it doesn't come up until people start warding a little bit better and like high diamond, 
but yeah. wards that are put right on these walls they don't see you on the far side of the wall so anytime you're walking back to lane if you're trying to do it in a uh inconspicuous way you want to just path along the bottom wall okay it's a good habit to be in to just deny vision. i like never take into account fog of war when i'm moving except for like on sideline waves because it's like so pronounced you just like sh show up as a blip on the mini map mm -hmm. but yeah that playing around fog is something i definitely need to get used to i think that's something that just comes with like game knowledge and time well, you have to be intentional about it. Otherwise, it's not right. going to come, and it will never come. I've seen people that play for 10 years that have no idea who's actually threatening them. Oh, okay. Right, and it's, and it's, you have to make the decision of, I am trying to deny information from them. And the more information I deny from them, it adds to their mental stack, which makes it a little bit harder every single moment that I do that for them to come up with the right solution. Right. right? Right now, they know they're strong here. They know that Yone is pushing. They can assess that they're pretty strong in this area, but they don't know exactly how strong. The only information they have is Garen is here. They just pushed Jen off the wave, so they know that the duo is nearby. The moment you show here, now they know. They know yeah. beyond a reason of a doubt that you are stuck here collecting this wave, and you're probably not leaving. You're going to go for these minions. So they might start coming up with a plan for 3v winning you. Okay? And right now, even moving back and forth, like we're not even doing anything to this wave. We could be accomplishing the same thing from this spot in the bush. Right. This dancing uh, as well, right? Again, it's just giving them information. Now we've cleared the wave. Now we have fog advantage. Have you communicated to your team that Yoni's been gone for 10 seconds? No. That's something that we want to add, right? Right now you're gone. So you could be moving. And most times as a, as a mid laner, you're trying to clear this wave quickly and get out. And that's because you lose to this matchup. 100% of the time, you're gonna lose to top lane fighters who know that they can all in you, yeah. okay? Um, sometimes it's also going to be other mid laners, especially if you're a mage versus an assassin. Uh, Orianna is the most famous, and I know that Orianna is part of your pool. So that is a champion that you absolutely want to be cognizant of showing in the side lane for as little as possible. Let's yeah, pretend I'm that we're so Ori terrible at side lane on Ori. Well, let's pretend for a second that we're Oriana. This is 16 minutes. So uh, I know I just showed the wave, but quick quiz. Do you remember if there's a cannon in this wave or not? It's every 130 after one minute. So there would be a cannon after, right? Then you're looking at every minute after that, because now it's every other wave. So 16 is no cannon, but 1630 is cannon. Okay. Okay, so we can expect a cannon right there. Yeah, I don't I don't know them by the back of my head. I just I have to check my base to see when the minions leave. Being able to cultivate a plan before the wave shows up will inform you a little bit better about what to do. Okay. Okay, and again, this will be this will come with your project. This is the two projects that I have for you are one, using your maximum effective spell uh, usage in your first four levels, right? Level up timers, getting in short trades, getting in those effects with zero reciprocation as often as possible. And your mid game big project is not showing in sideways for any amount of time that's not necessary. Okay. Okay. Um, some people yeah, like I to- Go ahead. I think I just treat my Katarina Q as like disposable when I'm in lane. But so yeah, I just like spam it without really thinking about it much. Besides, like I could get these minions, or I could get like 90 chip damage on this guy. Like I don't really. I yeah, and, and you you really have you really want to use it for more than that because it's your conduit for your E, yeah. right? Like without it, your E can only target what's on the map already. Your Q lets you E to new places, and. Yeah because of the nature of the dagger you know you can pick up in a radius around the dagger yeah do you know you can jump over walls like these ones yeah with we yeah yeah that, okay. yeah use that trick pretty often so using that radius and using your q as a way do you know where your q lands it's right behind the target that it first sits yeah exactly so if you're, you're casting right here it's going to land right there perfect um using those tools you can create a new jump spot for yourself 
and uh you know sort of like current current affairs and, you know the united states wants to have a landing spot in israel so <laughs> you know they're they for better or for worse they're supporting it because they just like in vietnam and, and israel they want to have a spot in the middle east right. for katarina it's going to be the same thing you want to be able to choose whether or not you're landing here 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 or on these or on the champion so yeah. your q can be used for chip damage and it can be used to clean up cs from range but it also is an important tool for being able to position yourself exactly where you want right so knowing the cannon timers knowing what's going to be showing up right this is the 1530 cannon already the fact that we cleared this and we showed means that they're going to have a better plan than us they already yeah. get to move they could gank our, our mid lane if potential if if they want um it also because we pushed so quickly now we're going to be all the way out here by the time we're clearing the next wave which now we're getting into the, like the contested area, right? This, right. if you draw an imaginary line from the tri bush towards the side of the map on both sides, so here to here and here to here, this whole area is contested. River is contested and river, you know, it's kind of like an extended arc. It kind of looks like a barbell, right? It's a thick area here, thin through the river, a little bit on the beaches, and again, thick on the other side. Right. Those are all contested areas that when you're showing in there, it is imminent threat. Clearing this wave, you disappear only for a moment. They get some more information on you. I would like you to clear this wave quickly now. This is the one that you wouldn't want to slow push because you already attacked with this wave. You just want to crash this wave quickly. Um, yeah. Benefits of slow pushing the first one means you would have had a thicker wave, which would have benefited you. Uh, it would yeah. have meant more minions crashing into their turret, meaning more damage, probably about a thousand damage if you can crash a cannon wave, for example. Whereas this, when you crash it, it's just going to go there. It's going to die. You know, this takes two hits, one hit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight total turret shots, the whole wave's dead. Whereas if it's a cannon wave with six casters, you're talking about 17 to 25 shots. And that can be enough time for them to do some serious damage to this thing. Okay. Got it. As we talked about last time, game is going to end with these, not with these. Yeah. Right? This this is temporary. You can you can undo this, you can get shutdowns, you can't rebuild turrets. This wave I'd like you to collect and then go into fog of war. Best way into fog, I why why is it not through this tri bush? Um sorry, can you repeat the question? The best way into this foggy area, right? We, we said that we just collected this. Oh. They have information on us that we just showed here. We've been showing here for the, for the past 20 seconds. It's uh, like we know to where they have control of the map. So it's likely that they have vision there. Yeah, exactly. Right. Last known information. Kane was over here. Yone was over here. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a good chance that we're just literally walking into Kane Yone. I'd say 25% of the time, there's just a Kane and Yone here because they were planning on killing you. All it yeah. takes is for one, for the cane to say, hey, look, it's Katarina, let's go, right? And if they make that play, then this motion that you make, boom, you're dead, right? right? Even walking to this bush, you might already be dead. But going to this one, 100%. And now that they've seen you, now they, now they get more information. If your plan was to rotate after you kill this wave, let's go back to their vision. You already knew that this was their strong area, so go through the area that, that they're not strong, right? Slide up behind, try to disappear into Fog of War. Your job in the mid game, when you're when you're playing either Major Assassin, it's not to always be pushing, and it's certainly not to be dealing damage to these turrets, because you just don't do enough, right? And you tend to be on a squishier champion as a mid lane Mage or Assassin, where any amount of collapsing is going to be problematic for you, right? Right. What you want to do is create 50-50 wave states, which would be cleared by both sides, six minions versus six minions, or seven versus seven right here. And if that's happening, and you'll see that in pro a lot of times, they're putting five people mid, they don't care as long as the side wave is even. But if they make it... Because then it doesn't push to either side. Right, it's just sitting there. It's, it's, a, net, it's a net even. No one's winning or losing anything, right? If it's slow pushing in any direction, then the team that it's slow pushing towards can say, 
okay, I'll chill here for another 30 seconds. We'll control vision. I'll rotate through fog so they don't know I'm coming. And I'll come pick up this wave now that it has a cannon, six casters, and six melees. And that's, that's gold that I get that they didn't get. And now I can come back, swing it, use it for myself. That's an extra 400 golden experience that I have access to that they don't. Okay. Right? It seems like we always want to get this next wave. And in the case where we're slow stacking here, then this will come to us in a much safer area, right? This can be like, you can call this your collection area. It's in your area. It's very hard for them to come to you. Although in this case, it's not that hard because of how much we saw them take earlier with Kane here, Yona here. It's very easy for them to just be here already. You right. want to have this in your mind that we're not going to exist here any longer than we need to. Got it? Yeah, I have a I have a bad tendency of just like autopilot full clearing waves in the mid game because I think that I need to have like tempo and just be somewhere anytime. But I think like getting the resources and the XP is so much more useful because I it's in so many mid games I find myself just like down XP for no reason because I keep on hard pushing side waves or I die on side waves and then just like lose time on the map. If we go back to this spot right here, and, and you're not wrong, you do want to have a continuous source of resource flow. Mm -hmm. But if we go back to this moment, if you had just hid in this bush, this wave dies just as quickly, plus the next one, right? Your AOE, you don't care. It could be two waves, it could be 15 waves. Your, your double passive stacked on the wave, you're going to one-shot the wave anyways, everything but the cannon, right? Or it's something like the, maybe the melees, you can get like 80% of them down, but the casters will get one shot for sure with a, a Q landing in between them and a W. Two pass, um, dagger passes will be enough to clear this entire threat, yeah. right? So you are you are agnostic. Like you, you don't care whether or not there's three waves here or two waves, but you just want it all to happen at once. So you're doing it as quickly as possible and that you're showing for the least amount of time possible. Right. Okay. So with that in mind, next time, let's recap exactly what the goal is. Yone's pushing. We assess that we can't get this before the turret, nor would we want to because we're nine versus 10. He has a wave. We're not looking to fight him. Yeah. Okay. So rather than showing right now, what's the best plan? Just stay in fog and wait for the wave to come in. And then once it arrives on my side, just slow push it until the next wave comes and then hard push it and then go into the fog on my side where they can't see me. I, yeah, I wouldn't even say in this case, slow into hard. I would just say, wait for it to stack and then just crash it like one clear. You're not trying okay. to like set up a slow push. You're just saying, let me stay out of vision as long as possible. I'll collect the wave when it's right here. Right. And so I'll just... I shouldn't even show until the second wave comes. Exactly. Right. Okay. And you know that yours is here. So you can infer that theirs is also right there. Right. It's on the yeah. same, same spot. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you know, you can always just look at the opposite side of the map to see exactly where it is. Yeah. That's, that's what I have to do. Okay. Exactly. I just like look at where mine is. Now you have a little bit of a better idea. 1530, 1630, 1730. The 30s is the cannons in the right. in the mid game. Okay. okay. And late game it's gonna be the other. So you'll you'll it'll be every wave. So you have a better idea by being intentional about your choices here in the mid game, you'll be intentionally gaining more and revealing less at okay. the same time without offering them counterplay. Right, because we don't know what's going on. So now that you've assessed it, Ace, how are we going to communicate it? Hmm. I'd probably just ping team back. Ping team back, like right here. This area is super dangerous right now. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just um ping team back and then like regular pings, like the the per the blue dots on the wave. Okay. Yeah, I might I might even say very specifically where you intend to be. I like I would say I'm on my way here, back ping here. And then when the wave comes, I would say I'm pushing and then I'm on my way here. Okay. Right? Like make it clear to your team I'll be there in 30 seconds. And that way they and with the back ping, they know that they have to just play patiently even even if they think that there's a pantheon fighting for wards here, they know not to try to go for ping or, or any kind of trades because there could also be a cane literally right here, right in his pocket. So you want to communicate that to your team and then you make it happen. All right. We, we went right. over a bunch of things. You ready to put it into action? Sure. 
All right, why don't you jump into game and uh, stream it on, on Discord and I will watch on Discord. All right. So to, I'm gonna write a summary in the Discord, all right? Intention, intentional level up and HP spikes. Short trades, using your cooldowns better than they do. Um, get them to crash the wave. Get them to crash wave two so you can three spike on wave three. Do you remember which minion it is? It's the second minion in the cannon wave. Correct. Or? Um... Or the cannon. I don't Oh, okay. Okay. Depending can, on what situation. Uh, no situation. Cannon cannons are worth more than the melees. Oh, if you kill, I see. I see. I see. If the cannon dies okay. first, like for example, let's say you magically had dematerializer or jungler comes by and smites it for you. Um, well, in that case, they're sharing. But but if the cannon were to die first for any reason, you're gonna hit that spike as well. Okay. Okay. So that's what I want you to be focusing on on the early game. We're going to. Make sure that we're using Fog of War and any push prio to, to uh, get ganks off. We're going to ace, we're going to communicate what we're doing. Uh, and we didn't get into much because we didn't have a jungler here for us to, to use, but I want you to think about leaning towards strong side. Okay. And then mid game, uh, minimal side wave. So should I play a game on my main? Actually, because this is in higher elo, it's uh, the games are a lot higher quality. <laughs> it, I mean, it's going to be a norms game anyways, so you're you're going to have your own oh, norms okay. elo. Yeah, I do, I do not want you to apply these things in in straight up ranked because we're going to be talking a lot and it's going to be very distracting. It's one of those things where knowing the information and trying to apply it might mean that it's a step backward before it's multiple steps forwards, right? And the idea is that. You want no pressure of performance. You want no pressure of winning. You just want to do the skill very well so that you can own it. And then after the game, you say, all right, did I do the thing that I wanted to do? Check yes or check no. And I'll sit with you for the first game. We're gonna, we're gonna play a best of three. The, be, the best of three is not whether or not you win or lose. Do you, do you have an hour and a half, by the way, to play? Yeah. I do, yep. Okay. The best of three is not whether or not you win the game, it's whether or not you win these small objectives that I've given for you. Okay. And if, if you do it well two games in a row, thumbs up, take a break, enjoy the fact that you won it, think about how you won it and how you can use it again. If you lose your best of three, we'll review and try to come up with tools for how to effectuate a little bit better with the things okay. we've spoken on. Make sense? Yep, totally. I've used this term mental stack. Are you familiar with, with it? I know I mentioned it last time, but does it make sense to you, the idea that you're adding to their mental load? Uh, yeah. That, By not that... giving them direct information. I just got play spot lane. You got play spot lane? Uh, yeah. Dodge and let's get a, um, let's go on the other account. I do play Katarina bot, but it's like extremely coin flippy. Yeah, fun. yeah, of course. <laughs> that is an intense desktop you have going on in the background, or is that a show that's going live? Oh yeah, it's a it's like a video that just repeats. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that that doesn't lo like overload your computer at all. Um, it does if it's been on for too long. Okay. So turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> that is. I have another. Intense. I have another on my other monitor too. Oh, Definitely man. uses up more resources than necessary. He uses up my brain resources. It's stimulating the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, recite back to me what the what the goal is. Um. 
it's to make a plan for the first four waves, not trade my HP for gold early, and to use Fog of War to my advantage. And uh, ace all the situations in my games. Yep, that's a good start. All right, that's a lot of, this is more than we normally do, but I know that, you know, you're on, you're on a budget, so I'm trying to give you as much as we can in a short pack time. Right, thanks. The thing about this character is it's extremely easy to just completely 1v9 throw the game. Carry the game or throw the game? Throw the game, well, both. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's I'm it's complete feast or famine. I either like one v nine or I'd bring the team down. By being deliberate about your choices in the mid game, you're going to remove a lot of those latter cases. Yeah, where in this game I got like an insane advantage. Like I get tons of kills early, but mm -hmm. I just play the mid game so terrible. Like these champions shut me down. Like I was trying to perma fight the poppy, the moo moo. So I just I I, I legit just chain died. Which which build did you go this game? I'm curious because I'm looking at that team. That that whole team, literally all five of them, have tools to to be good against Katarina. I went my like standard builds. Yeah, so this all would be a game where I would be much more inclined to go the tankier Wits End Terminus Merc Treads, right? Just you need to make sure that you're not dying to chain CC from Poppy Ari Malphite. Ver like literally every single one of them can contribute to the chain CC. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that, that's usually the best case for it. When they have the ability to lock you down, or if they have someone who's higher damage, longer range than you, right? Those would be the two big cases. But when they're a typical, like, front-to-back kind of meatball in the mid lane, like, if they're a Tom Kench Senna, for example, that's mm -hmm. where I'm mo most inclined to be the high burst because I just want to target Senna and force right. them to use the gobble on Kench, check, you know, try to mental stack the, the Kench, Try to give him as yep. much to think about as possible. And then once he's thinking about the fight that's happening right, right in front of him is the best time to go after the Senna. I want you to have kill pressure. Um, if if they use a potion, I want you to be unafraid of using your Ignite in response to their potion. Just cut the value of their potion in half and say, no, like you're stuck in the lane with me. You are going to die by level six, right? Yeah. And I like... I, I I like ignite because it's like the only time you have kill pressure early. But I I like to not run it in ranked games because then I just don't have TP. Yeah, well now I with this new tool, better. this new tool for the side wave, you're not going to need teleport because you're going to be in fog of war, and then you're going to clear the wave in two and a half seconds, and then you're going to leave. Okay. Right, and so you won't need teleport. Also, Katarina is not really a champion that wants to teleport into a fight. It's not like she has. A huge Sejuani ultimate or like a Malphite ult. like you don't have a big crown control effect and you can't necessarily you can't well not even necessarily you cannot teleport into the middle of a fight right yeah. if you're teleporting and they're like that's Katarina okay let's just kill her the moment she shows up you know that's obviously the worst case scenario the only reasons I started running it was because a my duo said like it's a lot and I agree like it just scales so much better in the late game and also b because the rank two Katarina on the Chinese super server always runs it, but it's mostly for like grub reset timers, which is like not something that we do in low. Yeah, and you know this is middle. I mean, you're 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 in skilled ELO, right? This is don't I wouldn't call it low. We don't want to be disingenuous. You're a good player. You're a talented player. You've gotten past low. You're at the high end of middle, and there's some decent players here, and and you're gonna start cruising past them if if you think of it like you know a, a long distance run other people have like sort of or, or you've sprinted this far and then now we don't have the things the stamina to keep us going to make us strong race after race mile after mile but now that you have access to the fundamentals you're going it's like you're pacing yourself a little bit better right you're right. still going to have that runner's talent inside you that can pick up the pace whenever you need to but now you're, it's not going to be a coin flip of, of how you feel that day, right? Or how mm -hmm. quick are you in that moment? Yeah, I, I also noticed there's like times where I'm just completely locked in. And there's other times where I just like run 100% autopilot. That, that's like the I, sort of there's thing. There's like times I'm like thinking about every move that I'm making and like every cooldown, et cetera. And then there's times where I'm just like lean back in my chair, you know, 
Do you do you notice a definitive change in your performance between the two? Yeah, absolutely. The the good news is that is your prerogative to change. You can change that, and it and it is completely in your control. That's the sort of thing that Israel uh, works with, and he completely dials in. And it's it's incredible to see the difference in in players that do and don't do that. Right. And being able to lock in, even even. Um, are, are you a much of a basketball fan? Do you familiar with Michael um, Jordan? Not really. I watch like playoffs and stuff. Okay. Um, back in, back in the day, this was, this was my childhood, but, um, Michael Jordan was a different animal in the playoffs. He just couldn't beat him. And, and something would turn on in him that it's just most games over most part of the season, he's 95% and 95% is still better than everybody else. But in the playoffs, he would find a reason to want to annihilate you. And when he was locked in at that level, he just didn't miss. He didn't miss the, the shots that mattered ever, and he would find a way to to win to beat you. All right, we've got Talia. She's got teleport. You've got ignite. What are your windows against her? Um, it's honestly kind of free because I can just blink over her E, but it's when she has no Q and no W. Mm hmm. And even even when she goes for Q. Uh, if you're getting your full conqueror stacked off and you're already you know dealing the majority of the damage, if she doesn't have her WE combo, you're not really even afraid. You're going to deal bigger right. chunks of damage. You can sidestep with the move speed from your W. So I want you to be super aggressive this game, starting at level three, uh, especially if she puts any spell on cooldown. If level I get a one. good dagger at level two, can I take that too? Hmm? If I get a good, like really good dagger at level two, I like to trade level two. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, although most times, like we said, we're not we're going to be behind on the first level spike. So she, you know, we have to be deliberate about that. We don't want to right. do it if there's six casters in the wave that is about to crash. All right. So wave one, just as a recap, I want you to disappear, meant give her a mental load, something to think about. Where's Katarina? Right. Give something for the jungler to think about as well. Then I want you to bluff at the minions with the intention of finding out how aggressive is she going to be. If she's not aggressive at all and she starts playing back, congratulations, you're now the proud owner of 63 new gold and there's no cost. If she does get aggressive, then you say, okay, I've, I've traded 60 HP to know that she's going to continue to poke me and I'm going to let this crash in. Also, the fact that she poked me with an attack means that the wave is now guaranteed to crash into me. Right. Okay. So when the minions get low, I walk up to fake a Q, and if she doesn't Q me, then I can just Q the wave. If she doesn't Q me, I just walk back. Uh, yeah, and I would I would say only last hit. Like, make sure that that Q is in the last frame possible. You don't want it going any further forward than you want than you need it to. Right. All right, Viego's on your right. That means you're going to be weak on your left side right now. So which side are you leaning? Bye. Or disappear, disappear, disappear. That's okay. But normally, again, there, there's no real reason to even be showing here because we know that we're only going to wave, we're only going to bluff, you know, jab at this first wave, so we don't even need to show up. Okay, good. Wave's coming to you. Enemy team leashed, so their jungler's on bot side. You can give this cast caster and don't throw any cues here. Now she's doing us a favor. This wave's crashing, so we know we're going to hit level three by just letting it crash to us. Right. We're going to take no HP here. Let her push it all the way. She's doing us a huge favor. Viego's moving to the top side, so I want you to start thinking about leaning to top. And I want you to ping that there's a ward in his raptors. All right, which, which melee is going to give you level three? Second. Okay. I want you to be ready to jump on her the second it happens. Go. If she uses potion, you can go ahead and ignite. Good job. Good job. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, shit. All right, yeah, don't, all right, still, same plan. Don't take any, H, any damage you don't need to. You have to wait for your cooldowns. 
think right, she's dead. Yeah. Oh, she's completely dead right now. Oh, That's shit. okay. The um, you do want to let Viego know, and in that window, you could have flashed onto your own dagger right there to kill her. Um, but that's that's one of those things that you know comes with time. Grab a potion so you can come back and keep being strong. I wouldn't recommend getting potions after the first pack generally, um, right. but you want to maintain this lead against her. She got something back, but I'm totally okay with how you ran that. Are you happy with how you ran it? Like the advantage you got? Uh, yeah, I'm not happy with how I played the fight, though. Definitely could have killed her. You could have played it better, and that's fine, right? If if we're leaving it to the point where all I needed to do was click better, then that's fantastic. All right, Viego's on your left side, so lean left. You want to stay as far away from the left as possible, or from the right. Look for short trades, but be careful that she's level four. All right, ping, ping that until he has, yep. This is okay. Viego had no business going into that area when your mid lane was going about to lose Pryo, and we had no more information. Uh, sneak over and get a ward on Raptors. Do you know what this information gives you? The fact that Raptors is down right now. Uh, the fact he's definitely on his top side camps. Top top side, and the fact that he uh, went top to bot, or that he made a like red. Krug's Raptor's path, in which case you can plan on the 215 respawns and where that might mean that he comes next. All right, next time she throws Q, I want you to jump on her. Let's get on the other side because she can't redirect it. All right, there's a good time. Sorry, I'm playing really unnaturally right now. Not how I usually would. But like I said, the fact that I'm talking means it's going to be a... Your mental load is higher than it normally is, right? Like, I'm giving you extra things to think about, and you're just parsing what I'm saying. Right. All right, look for a short trade if she throws a spell. Or bait, yep, any amount of spell back. Good. You're fine. Were you leaning left on purpose there because Alistar was nearby? Uh, no, I wasn't even thinking about it. Okay. I, I was going to say that worked out because of where Alistar was, but you want to be very deliberate. Careful, Ramus is on your right, so lean left. If you're left, then you can faker it. Anytime that he approaches, you just walk away. Ping to the Viego. You take that fight. Got this. Go for a chunk. Until he has out of mana, you can all in. All right, crash this wave. Force her, force her to miss minions. Nice. Recall immediately. No, you're good. Ideally, you want to. Uh, get that wave in as quickly as possible that last minion mm -hmm. if it's the difference between having gold and not having gold then i don't want you to care about it if if it's a, a enough gold for a spike or not is the difference on whether or not you care about killing it is what i mean should i try to kill him here no just let him come to you Used his ESO shit there. Yep. I don't think I don't think the players actually. I don't know. Maybe people are gonna make mistakes, dude. <laughs> it's uh, you know, there's uh, no disillusionment about it. People are gonna mistakes make mistakes all the way to the top of the ladder. Good. I'm glad that I used your W. You can eat a minions potentially. I don't think I can catch up. The early, yeah, the early minions are too too quick. Well, mid late they're still the same speed.
all right, communicate to your team. Your intention now is to get into side lanes as much as possible. So I want you to ping that you're shoving and then disappear. Now just walk away from that. Yeah, even okay. ignore it. It's, it's not worth sticking around for the last bit. A little bit of gold's fine, but 14 gold compared to being 14 seconds faster. Uh, it's not that much, but 10 seconds. Right. Leave that Leave that word. Oh, that's okay. All right, come back. You can kill it, and you can kill the wave. And I want you to disappear again. How do I hard shove it when she has her E? You can just wait or threaten. Try to get her to bait it, right? Add to her mental stack. Every time that she puts a spell on cooldown is a window for you to go for a kill. Right, you have a combat ultimate, she doesn't. Right. You probably you probably had two more windows to trade on her right there. Alright, let's shove this wave. I'm glad you're using the tower for help here. Shit. Good. Shove. Careful, careful, careful. All right, if you're going this way, you don't know that Ramus wasn't already sitting in that in that bush. Yeah. So right. that sort of spot, that's one, that's a death that we can avoid. That ward is a false sense of security for them. It doesn't actually see anything that you care about right now. Viego's topside. Uh, Viego wouldn't even be pathing and control wards in that bush. Don't see people that take wide turns around the river. All right, she's feeling way too comfortable because of how much HP she has. We need to try to get some amount of short trades under to zero, preferably, or one to zero, where she takes damage and we don't. Let's reset. Like... Yeah, you're fine. Viego, Viego will help to clear this for you. No big deal. We need to get you healthy. Um, I believe recurve bow is the highest source of, of um, her spiking. Yeah, I see... Um... Yamato rush, recurve bow always. Yeah, I think I think recurve bow is is your number one spike and boots boots two. Boots two. I usually is a... build boots pretty late because I never know if I should go sorks or if I should go defensive. Let's let's default into sorks unless they have three reasons to go plated or or mercs or uh, swifties. Okay. Okay. If they have three reasons to go not sorks, that's going to be your barometer. All right, we can kill this ward now, or I mean, Viego might have already killed it. It's still there. All right, I want you. I want you to communicate what your plan is. Good, love it. Stay healthy here. Good, juke some amount of damage. You're good. You can leave. I'm Ideally, like you want to stop this game. Hmm. Said I'm kind of playing like a robot this game. We're at we're adding things to your skill set right now, but you've already made the plan of uh, work for your team. They've uh, baited or they've continued gotten Ramus to fight for you. Continue to ping that you're coming in your way. Good, step back. You're good. Watch out. Good flash. Not bad. Alstar could have been a little bit more prepared for this. Um, the reason that Talia was able to react to this was because you started moving to the right in her vision. Mm. Okay. So just one more second of moving backwards puts you in Fog of War. Fog of War is OP, like we talked about, right? Now, something we didn't mention, but as far as mental stack, you know, flexing on them, trying to get them the most out of them possible... Every time you disappear, and let's let's say you're the enemy Talia and you ping, Katarina's MIA, right? Every time you do that, you desensitize their bot lane to it because they're going to ping, True. and then no one shows up. And then you, they ping, and then no one shows up. Wow. This is a very tough matchup for you. All right, we're going to clear the wave and reset. Try to get back to mids because you're going to try to get into every fight from now on. For the rest of the game, I want you in every single fight. I right, ping on your way, and ping, uh, push, and then which lane you want to attempt to gank. 
What's going on here? Oh, what is that? Watch them, watch them. Get some information on cooldowns. So you want to know what they have access to. No reason to see. No reason to be panned on you. Here you go. Beautiful. You're doing okay. That's Gragas. Ignite Gragas. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's on me. I'm talking to you while you're trying to focus, so don't worry about it. But I like what I want you to know coming into that situation. I want you to know exactly which cooldowns they have because you were staring at the fight, right? right? Coming out of base, unless you're casting E to a minion, there's no reason to have your camera on you, right? I should never sell D-Blade for first item, right? No. D-Blade is like a full level. It's, or it's as close to a level as you can get, right? It's giving you way too many stats. Should I have been running bot from spawn? I, I would have at least made a decision. I, I'm glad yeah. that you're asking the question. It looked like it was going to be pretty doomed with how good Callisto was going to be in that spot. Um, the fact that Ramus is top means it's very easy for you to affect, to affect that fight or to clean it up right now. Right now, you're just showing. So we either have to trade on Talia on purpose, which is really scary because we don't know. Uh, well, actually, Ramus is dead, so we do know. Now they have really good information about your movement. Mm -hmm. Still might be good enough though. It yeah, probably would have been. They weren't backing off, but they I might like, have vision. I like sure. what your instincts are. I like that you're thinking about it, and that that will be a point of growth for the next game. You're like, okay, that was a window. All right, this is gonna be a fast shove and a roam. That's fine. Remember that last one. I don't I don't care if you get the last one or not, if it means the difference between moving quickly. What's your what's your Nasher's tooth? I have it. I know I said that this is a push and roam, but push and recall and roam can be just as effective. So if if you have your item spike, it's always gonna be super important to make sure you grab it. All right, we're 15 minutes in. Ping assist me to mid lane and ping on my way to bot. There we go. Here, uh, is she going to go? She's trying to suicide. She's got it. All right, she got the info. Perfect. You have just increased your team's winning chances by like 10%. <laughs> just by yeah. getting that AD carry out. Hey, don't look at your screen. Look at their screen. We, we don't want to... We want to be in the habit of collecting as much info as possible. Okay. Oh, what? Oh, that really didn't hit. All right, her spells are down. Oh, my God. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we want to continue that earlier with that window. By the time I'm done saying her spells are down, they're, the queue's already one second from backup. Okay, so right. it's it's not as prevalent. And again, like I said, with me talking... Yeah, usually, live, like, I'm, I'm a lot snappier okay. on these. But I'm just like all right so I'm going to be quiet for the rest of the game what I want you to do is to communicate to your team what your side lane plan is and I want you to spend as little time in vision and as much time in fog as possible okay Recap, why why did it work out that way? Um they saw me running into that bush. Mm-hmm. And it was it was too quick. 
that you're walking into contested territory. Remember I said that river and the the um, corners of the map are too contested. You don't want to be in those areas unless you know. Now, it's going to be okay. They're, you're baiting out some amount of spells from them. Your team was stronger in the river than enemy team was, so you're going to be okay. But you could make that same play, but hook around and over that rock so that you're not going through vision if they have it, and you're delaying the amount of time that they might forget where you are or they just start thinking about other things. Right. You're doing good, though. I, if, considering how much I'm asking you to do, you're doing good. Careful of threat. I like that you left that ward. Well, they're all bought. Yep, disappear. Good job. A lot of times Callisto will rotate from midwave over towards top or someone will go and you might be able to catch someone in those in those areas, especially since all the fighting's been happening in the bot side. This is a good spot to hang out. Ideally we want to know that there's no one there. I want you to get in the habit of having a control ward. Right. Ping Alistar. Great job. Being in that position, you pushed top, you forced the enemy team to go into that area, you hid in fog, enemy team makes a mistake with misinformation. Right. That's your that's your recipe. All right. And every time that you're playing any any melee assassin, that's your your play pattern. Get a control word. Path, path mid here. Path mid. It'll make you flexible to be able to go in any direction. Remember that we never want to just path the side lane. We always want to have options. Good. Eyes on them. That was much more strained because it was just appearing in vision right out, right away. There was no time where you were like really invisible. You showed on the minion wave before anything really was happening. Watch them. What the hell? Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with that control ward, by the way. It doesn't see the other side of the bush. It's a long enough bush where you don't know. Right. This is fog, right? right yep. Here? All right, this is where you can go straight to a wave because it's in your collection area. You can just go pick it up and then you can move back into fog. Their wave is going to be reinforcing here in about 10 seconds. So don't show until you're ready to pick it all up and then pick all of it up. Oh, wow. Get the next one too. That's what I meant by the uh, 10 second window that you'd have. Right, as best you can move through fog. I'd prefer that you move upwards, but this is okay. Watch them, watch for cooldowns. There you go. This is going to be a great window for you. You're all in. Wow. Completely grief my cue. Not bad. A little bit of a rocky start, but a nice cleanup, actually. I'm, I'm impressed by that uh, mechanics at the end. Thanks. 
you see why that was a time when you can show quickly as opposed to waiting they've already used all their spells they've used cooldowns yeah. golden opportunity for you oh i killed you probably yeah careful um one of the things and again i won't blame you because i'm talking a lot i'm in your ear but i want you to press tab way more often and get a cue on who's strong where you know how strong are they etc cetera, etc cetera. right i literally I, I just click it like really fast like as a tick like, yeah i, I got you never really check it um Let's see, is it 850 for for the Landry's? Yeah. Okay. This would be a moment where I'd be fine with you selling D Blade for a second item spike. It's uh, fine yeah, here. Sure I would, uh, yeah, I'm not very locked in. Because because your team is in a part where you're just gonna collect waves for a second, you just had a big wave, you'll you'll be fine to go and just pick up a couple waves. Good choice, dude. Very nicely done. There you go. And you know what? Now you just pick up the next wave, hard shove, and then recall or fog. Oh. Ping back on Yone. Oh, never mind. He's good. He's good. Um, basically, what you're alerting him to is the fact is I'm off the map. They know that over here is the scary area. They're much more likely to go to you, who's hard pressed. Right, right? now that Gragas and Talia are showing, it's a little bit easier. He can make an informed decision. Uh, in general, rule a general rule I want you to have is control word over our basic items. Okay. Eyes on them. I never do that. Never do that. The control words. Yeah. Well, yeah. over like a like a component. Yeah. If it you know it once you get to if you are buying fiendish codex or higher or right anything that's in the in the second tier eight fifty or higher, you're oh. totally fine to do it. Now that game. Well, let me just finish that thought. If you're if you're buying you know eight hundred to a thousand gold worth of an item, it's going to be significantly more worth it because it's it's a more noticeable chunk of damage amp tome not close all right okay. the amount of misinformation or disinformation you can create with a control ward is much more important um summarizing that game there were some windows that we could have gotten that you might have gotten if i wasn't talking right against the talia yeah um, i think you were fairly effective in your combos you're actually pretty quick all right if i'm being honest you are you are showing a propensity that you're gonna have no problem climbing if you're making good decisions we okay. made a couple miscues where we walked through vision or walked mm -hmm. while they still had vision of us if we can take one more second to make sure that we're denying that then we'll have that much more effect we'll have a higher execution percentage okay okay um yeah. your mid-game wave management though perfect that's exactly what i want there is one okay. wave where I asked you to don't show bottom until you're ready to collect it. I was mm -hmm. asking to let that second wave reinforce without you on yeah. the map. The fact that there was one wave, another one's eight seconds behind it, you use your cooldowns on the first one, now you're showing for the maximum amount of time. Right, yeah. sort of like in that review that we did, you show on the first one, next one's there, we kind of want to clear that one as well. And then they had a lot of information on us. And that meant that your approach to mid was a lot more scriptable. They could they could anticipate as opposed to let it sit. I don't know where Katarina is. Suddenly she shows up on my mini map for two and a half seconds, clears an entire wave while while we're fighting. We may not even see her. Then she's gone. Right. Yeah. And that amount of uh, information denial will allow you to make that many more plays. OK, right. Uh, I'm going to give you a W for this. I'm going to let you go and play the rest of your best of three. After the next game, make a really conscious decision of whether or not you've applied these things. If you have, take a break. Your mind has gone through enough. If you've lost and you want to get one more chance at it to play your rubber match, do that. But no matter what, take a break after it. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Good job, man. Thank you. Good luck on these. Uh, do me a favor and... And send me a, a friend request on this account so that I can review the next game that you play. And I'll give you some notes. And and I'll be able to catch back up with you after this. And then we'll we'll see what, what the future holds for us, okay? All right, cool. What was your friends list or your friend name again? Uh, surrealist, one word. Hashtag Giga. This is Bellary? Uh Yep. I just heard the ding, so I've got it. Cool. All right, man. Good job. I'm excited to see what what uh, 
where it goes for you, okay? All right. Thank you very much, man. My pleasure. Peace. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing. It helps the channel out a lot. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep it surreal. Peace.